Most people define trust as a feeling or an affect. It's actually the aggregation or the sum of a bunch of interactions. You learn to trust over a series of interactions. Great. First question, interactions with who and what kind of interactions? So let's stop there for a moment. Most lay people think of trust as a feeling. Wrong. Trust is actually the sum or the outcome of a series of interactions. Jason, you know if you can trust me based on my competence, interpersonal stuff I say or don't say, and a series of interactions. So, so it's an outcome, it's not a feeling. And that's how we're going to treat it. So now, what I'd like to do is I'd like to give an assessment that says, is there low, medium, or high trust between the team and the leader, the leader and the team, the team and the outside organization, and the outside organization to the team? You could say organization to the leader and leader to the organization. In other words, trust has these dimensions that often in the literature aren't talked about. We just measure, Lencioni says, you're yellow, red, or green on trust. Right, everybody seen the Lencioni stuff. Well, wait a minute, if I get low, Mike, does that mean I have a trust issue among my team, or does my team not trust me, the leader? Does my, trust te does my team trust me, the leader, but have distrust among one another? Nobody's ever really pulled that apart, so what we're gonna try to do is pull it apart. Now, what you should be thinking, Santosh, is that's a little dangerous. In other words, we're gonna out somebody here. Team members don't trust leader, uh-oh. That might not be safe or comfortable. The answer is, who cares? We are hired, and you as an executive are trying to improve trust because every piece of literature you'll ever read says a team with low trust is a low performing team. A team that has an adequate level of trust will be a higher performing team. So the fact that we're gonna out where this trust is broken is a little risky, but it's new. Nobody's doing it. Everybody got it? By show of hands, do you get it? The dimension piece. The second piece we're gonna do is, now this is where the literature gets crazy. Again, because no one's doing this, we have to go to the academic type literature, the academy management people. What we have determined is that there are five facets, think about the word antecedents, ingredients, things that, things that make this feeling. Santosh, you have a feeling that you can trust me or the team leader. Okay, how do you get that feeling? What we are saying is that there's five or six items underneath of listening and being heard, sharing knowledge, perceived self-protection or vulnerability, that's the demonstrating vulnerability, the extent to which someone will share information or be guarded with information. Now you would say to me, there's many other dimensions of trust and I would agree with you. But these are the core, the ones that if they're broken, the outcome Michael Waldman is, I just don't trust you. But humans' brains don't work like that. They say, I just don't trust you. But what they're really doing is they're collecting a bunch of experiences with you around these facets. Does that make sense to everybody? So what we want to do is we want to put an assessment in front of you, the executive, not HR, uh, working leaders, uh, p any people leader, and say, wouldn't you like to understand this thing called trust in a much more targeted way? I got a trust issue member to member, organization to member, member to leader, whatever direction it is. And not only do I have a trust issue, I've got a specific behavioral issue that I can actually assess, measure, and impact. So Santos, when I show up at your team or when you show up at your team with the assessment results, we know directionally where the trust issue is broken and we know in which behavioral dimensions we have to pay more attention and can pay less attention.